everybody. Welcome to Grey Cup Game Plan here on Shaw TV. I'm your host, Mike Valente. We made it. It's Grey Cup Week here in Winnipeg. Come on in. The Ottawa Red Blacks will battle the Edmonton Eskimos this Sunday at Investors Group Field for the 103rd edition of the Grey Cup. We will have brand new shows every day here on Shaw TV, so stay tuned to the channel and our social media for all of our stories. One of the great segments we've had all month long on Grey Cup Game Plan is something called Where Are They Now? where we profile players from CFL's past. Rod Hill played for the Blue Bombers for five seasons back in the 80s. He won two Grey Cups and he actually holds the record for career interceptions by a player for that franchise. Here's his story now on Grey Cup Game Plan on Shaw TV. Rod Hill, two Grey Cups, a Winnipeg Hall of Famer, and you've stayed in Winnipeg. We followed you at tailgate party at the Blue Bomber game. We see you out on the floor here. People love you. They consider you a football hero. How does that make you feel? I think, first of all, we had a lot of winning football teams when I played. Played with some very good football players, guys like James West and Greg Battle and Chris Walbert, the list goes on and on. So I think I've been really attached to that Winnipeg uh, alumni in the 1980s and 1990s. I think that makes a difference for my name recognition. Rod, you're an American and you've lived the dream of playing in the NFL and then moving to the CFL. What was the transition like, not only as a football player, but as a person? Well, I think as a player standpoint, it was a much faster paced game up here. You had three downs, the wire to field, all the movement, the 20 seconds between downs. So there's really an emphasis on athleticism. That was the biggest adjustment to the speed of the game. Off the field, Winnipeg's a very vibrant community. It's a very giving community, and I fit right in. I'm a big fan of paying it forward. It's a natural fit for me to stay here making my home. What are you doing now? Bar companies. I manage a superstore in Winnipeg on Bison Drive near the stadium, uh, which is kind of ironic. And not only are you popular, but you are always volunteering and donating your time for charity. You no, know, anyone that asks, I, I can't say no. Uh, whether it's a local community organization, the Canadian Diabetes uh, Foundation. But my biggest uh, function right now, my biggest focus is Breakfast for Learning through our Present Choice Children's Charity. Over the past uh, year, we've given over $140,000. We support 43 schools in Manitoba. I'm a big fan of it. Very satisfied, Mike Riley. Looks on as Tracy Ham tries to put it in the end zone. Rod Hill intercepts. You won the Grey Cups in 88 and 90. Now, winning the Grey Cup at any time is really, really special. But out of the two, which one was the most memorable for you? A fan with a souvenir. Well, I think the first one in 1988. Uh, we weren't a very good football team early in the year, and we seemed to gel at the end. And we played uh, BC, which had a dynamic team, and uh, we came on the winning end of the, the game. Oh, okay, now let's go upstairs. To... What has football given you the most? Well, I think the first thing it gave me a lot of friendships. I met a lot of good people, uh, a lot of uh, people I still stay in touch with. And I, said, I think that the most important thing is it did give me some name recognition. There's no question about that. But you still have to perform when you get in the role. So I think it opened some doors for me. Uh, but the doors uh, were... Uh, Still my responsibility to keep it going. Hey, Rod, how's it going? You're the man, Mac. <laughs> so is Winnipeg forever your home? I'll probably be buried in Winnipeg. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Show me your step off the snap. Here we go. It's the last practice of the season for the Valley View Vikings. Good. Excellent. We have a rule here. If you don't show up to practice, um, you don't play in the game. If we call indie pitch, crash hard, okay? Vikes alum Skylar Allen joined the team this year as assistant coach. Right. You can't control all the situations. You kind of got to take them as they come and, and try and adjust. Hunter, you're throwing a one yard deep. At just 22, Skyler has a special relationship with the young players. You got, you love that stepping up, hey? One that is as much about being a coach as it is about being a peer. Once you guys catch the ball, go to the other side, okay? I'm still pretty young. I think they perceive me as like almost one of them, kind of like obviously a bit more respect 
because uh, I'm still the coach. Good effort, Johnny. And I really just try try and be their be their friend and and be there for them. Like Skyler the works guys. closely with head coach uh, Corey Beeman. That's, that's what this practice is usually for. A man with a resume chocked full right of football right. cred. So make sure I started playing. Uh, ooh, it was 1984 or 85, I think it was. I was playing uh, as a you know a young guy in countless community football, and then, and then I moved on to high school football, and then I moved on to uh, play at UBC. Uh, my last year of football was 96. I jumped into coaching the next year. I've coached down in Vancouver, uh, in Kelowna, and now in Kamloops. You get around him, someone else will be coming to get you. A man who has coached top players now working to develop new ones. Something he says has been his biggest challenge yet. But with great challenge, often comes great reward. On the ball! I've coached in university, I've coached junior football, and I've coached high school. I think the most challenging for me was coaching, is coaching high school. What? You get some boys coming out that are pretty, pretty green. And then once they, uh, once they get past the fear of the contact, I think that's a big thing. Then usually the light can go on a little and they, they seem a little more assertive out on the field. And it's kind of nice to see. Do you want an indie pitch or something then? A similar feeling seeing former students like Skyler come back to help foster a new generation of Vikes. The best thing about him is the fact the relationships that he's developed with those players, uh, he's effective at communicating with them and it makes him a good coach. A budding talent who continues to learn from the man who taught him on this very field years ago. He knows a lot and he's passed on that knowledge to me and now I'm trying to help pass some of that knowledge on. For Shaw TV, I'm Sam Numson. Go, go, go! The Grey Cup trophy weighs 9.9 .9 pounds. Pleased to be joined now by the mayor of the city of Winnipeg, Brian Bowman. Brian, it's a thrill to have you here. I think if we can get the mayor, people are going to watch this show, so we appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'm glad you think that. <laughs> I got to ask you about some football stuff here, obviously. Did you have a personal connection to the game growing up? Did you watch the CFL? Did you play the sport? Uh, well, I, I might surprise you, I was not a linebacker. But uh, I, you know what, I, I have been going for years. My wife and I are avid uh, football fans. Uh, we went to school out in Toronto when we were thinking about moving back. Uh, she wanted to stay a couple more years in Toronto and uh, ultimately she said the condition upon moving back at, at the time that we did in uh, 99 was, uh, wasn't conditional on, uh, on getting married, we were single at the time, it was season tickets to the Bombers forever. And so we've been season ticket holders since 1999 and uh, we've been going with our, our boys and it is very much part of our family DNA. And the CFL really has that reputation of being that exciting game, right? The Grey Cup itself is such a great slice of Canadiana. Do you have a favorite Grey Cup memory when you look at years past? Well, I mean, I think back to the, uh, obviously the 80s and the 1990 win. Um, those were, that was an incredible period of time, which we will relive again, uh, hopefully sooner than later. I know it's been a struggle for fans since then, but uh, you know, I would say those, those are probably my best memories of, uh, of football. Uh, I met Willard Reeves actually back in, it was probably the late 80s, so I was, uh, I was a teenager at the time, probably mid, mid 80s uh, when he was at the height. And I remember he came out to uh, where my, my mom's family is from. Um, they're, uh, they're from Victoria Beach. And I remember he came out there for some charity event and he taught me how to catch a football. And I'll never forget the fact that he took time out to, to show me how to properly catch a football. I wish I had retained some of it, but yeah. you know, it was, uh, it's that sort of personal connection that the Bombers have continued that tradition of being active and involved in the community and uh, something that really makes us stronger as a city. It's expected that 10,000 people are gonna visit the city of Winnipeg over the next few days for the Grey Cup. From an economic standpoint, what does that do for a city? Well, I mean, it, it's huge. Uh, I, I mean, I, the numbers I'm hearing are actually much more significant than that in terms of the number of visitors we're expecting. But definitely for the visitors that are coming into town, they're spending money on you know, retail, they're spending money at restaurants, they're staying in hotels, and they're participating and taking part of the vibrancy that is Winnipeg's arts, culture, and entertainment scene. And so, uh, you know, I think as people come to Winnipeg, they see what a beautiful uh, community we have, what a vibrant uh, arts and culture scene that we have. And uh, we know that when people come to Winnipeg, they often come back. And so this is a great investment in building our own capacity to bring in even more uh, events like this and bigger events like this, like the 2017 uh, Canada Summer Games. 
Weather has been a huge factor in Grey Cup games in the past. Do you like when the elements come into play like that? Or for Sunday, are you hoping for a clear sky, not so cold type of night? Well, my toes want it to be warm, uh, but my heart wants it to be cold. I like it when the elements are there. It's part of the tradition of the game, whether it's the fog bowl or the mud bowl. I mean, you look back at some of those classic games and it was really uh, the weather and the elements that really made it memorable. And so Canadians are tough. CFL fans are tough. It doesn't matter if you're, uh, if you're from you know, either of the coasts. Uh, you know, when people come out for the CFL, CFL game, uh, they're ready for it. And uh, you know what, if it increases our hot chocolate sales, so be it. Fallout Boy was chosen as the halftime performance for this year's Grey Cup here in Winnipeg. Let's say Fallout Boy was unavailable. If you could choose Brian Bowman, who would play at the halftime show, who would it be? Well, uh, it'd probably be Van Halen. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know if Eddie Van Halen or David Lee Roth have time right now, but you know, the, the Sheepdogs I know are performing as part of the festival. I'm a huge uh, Sheepdogs fan. You know, you can't go wrong with BTO or the Guess Who. I mean, uh, you know, I look at Prairie Town, it's one of my favorite local songs, and so uh, th there's a lot, to, a lot to choose from in terms of Canadian artists and local artists, but I, I'm a personal Van Halen fan, so I'd say Van Halen. Thank you very much, Brian. We really appreciate the time. Thanks very much. Cheers. I'm Blair Malstravich. And I'm Mike Valente. And this is Shaw TV's Impromptu Tourist Guide for Winnipeg. Now we have Mike Valente here because he's only been in Winnipeg for a few months right. and he needs to see the sights. I do. So I am taking him to everything that is iconically Winnipeg. I'm really enjoying this trip, Blair, because uh, having just moved to Winnipeg myself earlier this year, a lot of people really don't know about the city at all. They know about the jets, and they know that it's freaking cold. Yeah. But that's about it, right? And there's a lot to explore here. Yeah, there's definitely lots to see, and I think sometimes we get a bad rap, but they're... For sure. On many different levels, like culturally, historically, Funly. Funly? That's not a thing. Entertainment-wise. <laughs> this one is really impressive. This is one of the newer things to uh, Winnipeg as well. And I think nas nationally and internationally, this is a big deal. Okay. We're going to the uh, Museum for Human Rights. Okay. The most important message behind the Canadian Museum for Human Rights is to educate us to what has happened mm -hmm. and then to avoid those human rights violations in the future. So it's a, it's a, positive, it's a positive outlook. So the whole building is very symbolic. The glass windows around it are supposed to be the wings of five doves. And then the Tower of Hope that comes at the top is not completed because that hope will always keep going and will always continue into the future. I'm just going to stay in this lane because coming up in a little bit is the Palomino Club. Oh, it's world famous, isn't it? It is the world famous Palomino Club. And I feel like a lot of football fans here for the Grey Cup might want to enjoy some nightlife at the Palomino Club, I which I'm not sure if you're aware, I'm sure you are, you've lived here all your life pretty much. They have Booty Shake Mondays. Yes. Which may not be suitable for all viewers. No, especially if I'm participating. Good Lord. <laughs> Special thanks to this episode's Manitoba-made party time snack, Chocolate, by chocolatier Constance Paul. For the players on this year's Dryden Minor Falcons, it's an entrance they won't soon forget. Running out on the home turf of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers to play a game in front of family and friends watching from the stands. Troy Kerouac got the call. One, two, one, two, ready, set, hot, hot. Good. For this, for the kids, it's a, it's a once in a lifetime chance. When we tell them they're going to play in the stadium, you know, they all kind of get quiet and their eyes get big. And then, you know, as the as the, the date comes, they're getting more and more excited about the stadium game. So this is definitely the highlight of our season. From a Bombers game the day before to meeting players and executives, it's a weekend of football that few have the chance to experience. We've dealt with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers for the last three years, and they've just been a, a top-class organization in every sense of the word. They're more than accommodating to make sure that amateur football and youth football is flourishing in not only Manitoba, but in northwestern Ontario. And for this, for the kids, it's a, it's a once-in-a-lifetime chance. Playing their northwestern Ontario counterparts from Kenora, the game itself was not necessarily about the final score, but more of a lesson in just getting out and enjoying the moment. Not a lot of hockey teams get to practice in Maple Leaf Gardens or, you know, the MTS Centre or whatever it is, but you guys 
guys get to come down and play on the pro stadium. These guys were just here yesterday watching the Bombers play, so it's an awesome experience for them. The kids are vibrating. They are they are truly excited to be with them when they experience their first football uh, joys and lows. Uh, is I feel very uh, blessed to have that opportunity. I think it's really cool that we have a chance to come out here and play where not many people are allowed. It's a pretty good opportunity to learn how to play the game of football and for some people who are new to the game they can learn how to play the game for in the future if they want to play professionally. Oh it's pretty great this is my second time being down here so first time was amazing this time is pretty good too though because like it's just it's just like uncomprehendable like to be on this field you know. You can't measure the impact on the kids and what will happen is is when in a few months a few weeks from now when the Grey Cups played here you're gonna have kids sitting at home in their living room pointing to the t camera and pointing the TV and saying I made a play right there right there right where that spot is I got tackled or I scored a touchdown and so the ripple effect of this is huge so it's we're more than just thrilled to be able to be out here and have this opportunity. For Go on Shaw TV, I'm Tommy Johnson. There was no Grey Cup game from 1916 to 1918 due to World War I, and in 1919 the game was cancelled due to a rules dispute. Right now I'm rolling the for the Grey Cup on the bottom. They have some black stri stripes in it. And that's made out of chocolate? It's all made out of chocolate. Well, if there's an exciting event coming to town, there's no question that the woman next to me has been asked to be involved with it. With the 103rd Grey Cup coming to Winnipeg, no surprise, Constant, that you were asked to do something. And you're actually creating a really incredible piece of artwork oh, for a party. It looks amazing. So. We got a sneak peek at it, and it looks <laughs> incredible. What are you guys making? Uh, well, when you think of the Grey Cup, you think of two things. You think of footballs and you think of the Grey Cup. Mm -hmm. and, and so we made ourselves a small, uh, uh, somewhat replica, almost a stylistic yeah, version yeah, of like the Grey Cup. Uh, uh, we're still yeah, applying the, the Grey, the gray um, okay. paint onto the Grey Cup. That two together. Okay. It's a perfect okay. silver. Okay. Really, really nice silver. And then uh, we've made a life-size, a couple of life-size footballs, uh, medium-sized ones and, and little tiny ones for people to have. Uh, the big ones and the medium-sized ones, uh, certain select ones, uh, you have to be able to crush and on the inside of them uh, are, are also little footballs. And the idea of that is that there's so much energy, you know, and, and we're, we're presenting this at one of the Grey Cup events uh, before the Grey Cup, so we know that the energy level is going to be so high that you want to crush something, and that was our concept with this particular uh, showpiece. When I think, like, when you first told me that you can crush it, I'm like, oh, that's perfect. You know, you can think of football, like, crushing beer cans, but the chocolate is so beautiful. It was almost <laughs> hard to see it break, but it's absolutely delicious. So talk about um, what makes the chocolate so special here that you make. Well... <laughs> At the end of the day, it's not meant to be a toy. Like, we, we do make things because they're beautiful, but we know ultimately people are going to eat, eat the chocolate. So we do use premium grade chocolate. Good quality chocolate should have five or less ingredients in it. I say five uh, because milk chocolate would have the milk powder in it, but it should just have the cocoa butter, the cocoa, the lecithin, which binds the chocolate together, and the uh, vanilla and a bit of sugar. So at the end of the day, the good people, um, we, we make beautiful things, but we know that people are going to eat and hopefully enjoy the good chocolate. Talk, tell me a little bit about the process um, of what goes into thinking about what you're going to be creating because I know that you and your team a lot of thought goes into it right it is that's it's actually that's the joyful fun that, that's where we get our, our bliss our buzz because we come up with these concepts and then we sketch them out on paper as you would for uh, any piece of artwork if you're going to design a building or something you would have a, a thumbnail sketch so we do the same and then we we kind of figure out um, is this the best way to get our idea across mm -hmm. and and then the other part is is how can we logistically put this together and then how can we logistically get this to the place where it needs to go because we still have to deliver our pieces so there'll be pieces there'll be elements on the showpiece that will need to be put in place once we're at site mm -hmm. and then you have to take into consideration whether Chocolate likes to crack in really cold weather, so we're waiting to see what the weather's going to be like. As, as the teams are waiting to see what the weather's going to be like on yeah. game day, we're waiting to see uh, you know, what the weather's going to be like on delivery day. <laughs> So you have to also be really, like, you can be really conceptual about something, but it still has to be logistically doable. Oh, you see the nice blue on it? Even though we, uh, the Blue Bombers are not in the Grey Cup, yeah. we need to celebrate the Blue Bombers, because it's still the Blue Bombers' 
palm turf. Wow, that's incredible. So much goes into this. I know you guys are always busy. How busy are you going to be doing Grey Cup? Because you mentioned to me earlier, you got hundreds of tiny footballs that you need to get out there to all the parties. Yeah. Thousands, yeah, that's thousands. crazy. It is. But we've been working on these footballs for weeks now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're almost on target. We'll be ready by Grey Cup time to have all of our footballs ready. Well, thank you so much, Constance. Make sure you look out for her chocolates if you're attending any of the Grey Cup parties while in Winnipeg. And also come down, check out your shop. Where are you guys located? At 180 Provence and beautiful St. Boniface. Great. Thank you so much, Great Constance. Thank, thank you. We are back here on Grey Cup Game Plan on Shaw TV, awaiting the arrival of the Grey Cup Trophy itself here at the Manitoba Legislature. A reminder that we will have brand new shows every single day leading up to kickoff here for the 103rd Grey Cup in Winnipeg. Speaking of that Grey Cup, Grey Cup Pride is a huge thing all across the country. Let's go out to Fort McMurray now, where Grey Cup Pride is soaring through the roof. The 13th man is extremely important to the CFL, but what does it take to go to say, well, five straight Grey Cups? Well, we find out because we've got that Grey Cup pride. The, the Grey Cup is like a gigantic party featuring everyone from across Canada. Everyone is in their uh, team colors, having a great time. Uh, you meet people from across the nation and you meet people that you've seen in previous years as well that you recognize or may have talked to in the past. So it's a really unique Canadian experience and definitely recommend it to, to anyone to attend. Tyron Alt lives in northern Alberta where CFL football is at least a four hour drive, but distance will not stop the most passionate of fans as Tyron has been to eight Grey Cups in the last five straight. A hard accomplishment unless you're determined to make it happen. I was born in Regina, so we didn't have much else in terms of professional sports other than the riders. Uh, my dad has actually worked for the city of Regina for pretty much his entire adult life and works at and runs Taylor Field now. Uh, so Saskatchewan Rough Rider football has been with me since the day I was born. <laughs> uh, I think just to the, the, the see the championship being raised, I remember my first one was uh, I think it was 95 when the first Grey Cup was in Regina and going to that and just getting to experience the fun as a kid uh, at that time and uh, then into my adult life when you have a little bit more money to, to spend. Uh, it's just such a cool, unique experience that uh, it, it's a great time. The 2013 Grey Cup was by far the best experience of all the Grey Cups. Uh, being there in Taylor Field, Mosaic Stadium, and in the freezing cold, uh, it, it could have been minus 40 for all I cared. Seeing the Riders win on home turf was uh, an experience I'll never forget. Tyron's passion doesn't just end with Grey Cups as he is a part of Rider Nation through and through. Tyron, can you just walk me through some of your most prized memorabilia? Uh, for sure. So I've got a couple of authentic Rider helmets. Uh, the, the traditional green as well as the Stormtrooper white as it's called uh, around the circles. Uh, got some Grey Cup tickets here from some of the events that I've attended in the past. Uh, these are my shares in the Saskatchewan Rough Riders uh, so I, that my wife bought me. I am an owner as they gave out shares uh, during the 100th anniversary of the team. Uh, when me and my wife got married last year, we wanted to invite Gaynor the Gopher to a game. He couldn't attend, but he did uh, send his congratulations uh, with a sign uh, that was then presented to us on our wedding day, which was very, very cool. <laughs> you are not just dedicated to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, but to Fort McMurray as we have a 13th man with Fort Mac on the back. <laughs> this uh, summer we were fortunate enough to host a preseason game between the Riders and the Eskimos as well as a game between the Eskimos and the Argonauts, uh, the two most northern CFL games in, in league history and it was great to see that kind of exposure to the Fort McMurray market uh, and build a whole new fan base for the CFL. From Fort McMurray to the next stop on the Grey Cup Tour for the 13th man and go, I'm Doug Roxburgh. It was the biggest stage these little guys have ever played on. As part of Football Manitoba's Championship Weekend, the seven and eight year old Crunchers got a chance to play on the same field where their hero suit up. Investors Group Field, home of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And after the final whistle blew, Shaw gave the Crunchers a chance to pose with the Grey Cup. No 
no doubt some of those players hoping one day they'll have their own name on the trophy. The trophy cost $48 when it was first presented in 1909 and has since been appraised at over $75,000.